So I posted this render in my Discord community and a few people asked me how I made it. So I thought, why not create a video about it? I'll be trying my best to recreate it and go over the steps, so just bear with me. First, primary, then secondary references. Always. Oh. Primary references being how you would like your overall scene to look composition-wise, and secondary references being the individual objects within your scene. All I did was go to Google Images and type in stuff related to how I wanted my overall scene to look for primary references, and same thing for secondary references. Textures.com is also a good place to get some ideas, but unfortunately, I couldn't find too many good secondary references. And because I'm the worst human in the world, I ended up using AI to generate some secondary references. Anytime I found something useful, I just slapped it into Pure Ref, which is essentially one big mood board where you can have all your images. After that, I jumped into Blender and got to work. Pro tip, always start with a thing that is going to have the most impact on your scene. That being said, I started with modeling some of the buildings because they'll be making up the majority of the scene, and after I've made one or two, I can just start duplicating them around. All I'm doing is looking at some of my secondary references that I've gathered and making some similar looking structures. And all of you topology nerds, you can close your eyes for this part. There were some of these complex shapes on the barriers and windows, but since they weren't going to be in direct focus, I thought I'd just put some fence structures there. Makes sense, I know. So here's me trying to remember how to do that without watching a tutorial. I eventually got it, but you basically just need to add a bunch of loop cuts, right click and poke faces, then select one of the edges, press shift G, select length, decrease the threshold and delete only edges and faces. Then you need to convert it into a curve and increase the depth of value. I know it sounds super simple, but a tutorial on my page about it if you want to check it out. Now you see these complex shapes at the top of the windows. I was trying to work out what I could do for that, so I found some images of ornaments online, imported them into Blender, and just basically used them as a reference to model with, and then placed them at the top of the windows. Not perfect, but still works for the most part. At this point, the building was almost done, and I just wanted to add some detail to the roof. But in the middle of doing that, I realized I was about three hours late to announcing the winner of the Blender contest I host on my Discord. Be sure to check that out, by the way. Link in the description. So I added some basic detail to the roof based on one of the references and wanted to throw some textures on to see how it was looking. I basically just mixed two sandstone materials with each other and it looked good for the most part and then... Blender crashed. Now here's me just observing the beauty of my creation with some lighting, and while it wasn't amazing, it was a good start. Now this is where things take a turn. I realized, wait a minute, I have a whole desert temple pack in my asset browser. Shout out to Max Hay. So rather than spending the next 30 days modeling the rest of the scene, let me just throw some of the assets in there and see how they look. Now, while I was originally trying to recreate a previous render, I thought, what's the point, and thought of creating something new. So I went back to my primary references, and the composition of this market one stood out to me. In particular, these pillars, and how the scene tapers off in the distance. I thought it would be pretty cool to create something similar, and so I basically just started duplicating the assets around to recreate that similar kind of composition, and here's more of just me doing exactly that, until I got a composition that I liked. For the floor, I originally added in some flat stones that I got from the ANT landscape add-on and duplicated them around a bunch. However, from close-up, they really didn't look that great, so after some brainstorming, I decided it would be cool if I used sand instead, so the whole environment looked like kind of abandoned or overrun. I watched a tutorial for the sand, but it was essentially just a subdivided plane with a displacement modifier set to Voronoi texture and a footprint displacement map. I also went into proportional editing and raised the sand up in the corners because that's where it tends to collect after being blown around in the wind. At this point, I was almost ready for rendering, but the lighting in the back didn't look great, so I added these things called gobos, which is pretty much just a plane with some holes in it that the light can shine through so it looks a bit more broken up and natural when shining on the objects. From there, I started adding in some assets to the foreground that seemed appropriate for the scene, like pots, barrels, sticks, and stones just scattered around to make the place look a bit more... full. 
One last thing which I thought would have looked good was some distinct camel footprints. So I tried turning an image of camel footprints into an SVG, but that wasn't working for some reason. So then I just imported the image and started modeling them inside Blender. But after going through that whole process, I realized, oh wait, why don't I just use the actual feet of the camel models I already have in my scene? But to be honest, by the end of it, it really didn't look that great. Once that was done, it was time for a test render. While it looked fine for the most part, I noticed there were some stretched textures here and there. I also played with the positioning of the characters so they were a bit further from the camera. It seemed appropriate at the time. And once that was done, it was time for the actual render. First thing to do was enable the mist pass so we can export it into Photoshop. Then set the render settings to 4K, which is what I typically use, as well as rendering with 512 samples. This is the compositing setup I use for rendering. It's pretty simple. The main thing is just adding a bit of lens distortion. Inside Photoshop, I imported the image as well as the mist pass, set it to screen, used the curves adjustment to dial it in where I want, then created a mask, inverted it, and just painted it in where appropriate. From there, it was just a couple of other things like brushing in some blur for the highlights, doing some dodging and burning, and putting it through the camera raw filter. Final thing didn't turn out too bad, but could have definitely done with some more touching up. If you guys would like to see more in-depth breakdowns of some of the stuff in this scene, check out my school community. Link is in the description.